Are we blessed this morning? And so I want to show us just one key by the Spirit of the Lord and we pray that will help us multiply results in our lives. There is a reason why people experience certain levels of liftings and they plateau at a level in ministry, in business, and never seem to rise further. Look, let's start with Matthew. Matthew 14. Three scriptures very quickly. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 13. Matthew 14 and verse 13. The Bible says Jesus departed by ship into a desert place. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot into the cities. And when Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, the Bible says he was moved with compassion towards them. He healed their sick. Next verse. When it was evening, the disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Next verse. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. This is a prophetic word from someone. You don't need to leave Jesus for your needs to be met. It is always in his presence. The disciples were saying, this godliness is distracting your people from eating. Allow them to leave you for a while and go and look for food. And Jesus said, it doesn't work so. If my presence cannot give them this lifting, if, if my presence cannot supply food, then it cannot be found anywhere. This is a word of caution. This is not my word. But it's already a prophetic word for someone. Because many times the devil will try to negotiate and say, you know what? Paying attention to Jesus is making you lose out in life. Why don't you leave him temporary? Time is gone. This was a discussion that happened in the night. Time is gone. You started this journey when you were 10 years. Now you are 40. It looks like there's nothing to show for it. You are 50. There's not, why don't you leave Jesus? And Jesus says, no. They need not go. Right in my presence, I will supply their needs. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Whatever would require you leaving Jesus to have it is not needed for your destiny. I assure you, no matter how glittering and how flamboyant it looks, everything that will require you leaving his presence, I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here Worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here serving you all of the days of my life. I'll be here serving you all of the days of my life. It's a commitment. I'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life. I'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. 
Martha, Martha, you are worried and so frustrated about many things because you have been mentored into thinking it is when you leave his presence that you find these things. No. In his presence only, there is fullness of joy. And even the pleasure that you seek is found at his right hand. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So let's continue our discussion. I believe that was a word for someone. Please give us the scripture. Let's, let's read on. Luke, Matthew 14. It says, but Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. 17. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. 18. Hallelujah. And Jesus says, bring them hither to me. Jesus is teaching us here the secret of multiplication. I thought the secret of multiplication was to give thanks alone. Until one time I was studying and the Lord told me, no, the secret of multiplication is not to give thanks. The first secret of multiplication is surrendering everything you have first. You don't give thanks with it in your hands. You give thanks when it's in his hands. Bring them hither to me. Bring your financial limitation to me. Bring the lack of influence to me. You do not have the power to multiply it. And the Bible says, 19. Are we learning something this morning? And he commanded the multitude to sit down. That is the first key to multiplication. You must find rest as proof that you trust me. It's not merely just saying, I thank you in anxiety. Anxiety is sin. Number one, surrender your pain and everything to me. Put them in that alabaster box. Don't just bring pleasant things. Put your pain, put your disappointment, put everything at the alabaster box. You don't break it at my feet standing. He said, sit down. If you don't have the patience to sit down, you will not eat bread from the master. I know you are in a hurry because time is gone, but find rest. Let it be that you trust me. God is speaking to someone. It's time to sit down. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. He gives his beloved sleep. He spent a whole chapter talking on worry. We live in a society that in an attempt to communicate responsibility, they end up promoting anxiety. People run from pillar to post. Woe betides a man who does not have the advantage of God's favor on his life. He will labor helter skelter and only return with pain as a reward. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Are we together now? So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. How many of you know a hungry man is an angry man? You don't ask an angry man to sit down when he has not seen the bread. All kinds of complaints already. Insensitive Jesus. You wasted our time. Now is night. We have children. The master commands, sit down. Someone is saying, Lord, I started a building project. It's not finished. I, I need to go around. I, I was told that there's someone I can meet and God is saying, sit down. Three hours will, with me will give you what a connection of 10 years cannot give you. I want you to know the value of his presence and the value of finding rest. There remaineth a rest for the Lord's people. Next verse. Are we learning the principles? So principle number one, learn to hand over everything. God does not say we should hand over only good things. You hand over everything. Your pain, your disappointment. I am the one... You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. By next week, this will be someone's song. That I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. When people ask you, how did it happen? You will tell them, look, I know that I was diligent, but there is a part of this equation I don't know who completed the gap. All I know is that I 
did my due diligence and God was introducing the equation from then I don't know what happened all I know you see you've heard me say that anything plus God is the answer he puts there anything plus God there is no logic once God comes in it is the answer he puts there he can put five loaf two fish plus God equals to feeding 5,000 men minus women and children alongside 12 baskets full. The Bible says, verse 19, please. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. Look what he did. He took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed it. Some versions say he gave thanks. And he break it and gave the loaf to the disciples. Go and feed the multitudes. And as they went with thanksgiving, multiplication began to happen. Let me tell you this. Multiplication is always at the instance of genuine gratitude. When you surrender everything to God, when you find rest as a proof of your faith and trust in him, the next thing is to begin to give thanks. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Not God, you gave me tea, you gave me bread. Where is the jam to put on it? Uh -uh. I thank you that I have the hands to hold. You know, we live, we live in a world where people are always conscious of what is left. Lord, you have done this. Thank you. We, we quickly breeze it. Lord, when will you bring this? And he says, is this your perception of my goodness? Even as humans, there are people you will give 10 naira, 100 naira. And the way they tell you thank you, you feel, you feel very evil for giving them 100 naira. You are compelled to step up that amount because that level of gratitude outweighs the benevolence. It's like a debt you owe them again. Have you blessed someone and then he tells you 100 naira, he tells you thanks. 10,000, he says thanks. 100,000, he says, thanks. 1 million, he says, thanks. Is that a wise man? It took different levels of effort to produce that amount. And the possibilities that those amounts can produce are not the same. Your thanksgiving is not complete until the benevolent person, the one who gave that thanks, perceives that you are grateful. Your thanksgiving is not as you want you keep thanking and looking at the person you are thanking until he perceives that your thanks matches his benevolence. You should not stop. So when you come to God for giving you life, for giving you grace, for giving you children, for giving you this, you've been complaining about a two-bedroom flat and say, Lord, thanks in one minute. And you use three hours to complain. He says, wow. But someone will hold a loaf of bread and keep it down and roll and almost roll on the bread. And God says, you are doing this for bread. You are ready for the next level. And he opens him up. Multiplication. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Is the word bata. It means throw yourself and expect him to hold you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Verse Verse 6 is the secret. In all your ways, acknowledge him. One of the principal ways of acknowledging God is giving thanks. To acknowledge means to ascribe worth. To acknowledge means to give the person an impression of value and usefulness. Are we learning something this morning? In all your ways, acknowledge him. It's one of the mysteries in the kingdom that every time you meet a wall in your life, every time you come before an obstacle, every time you feel limited at a current level, stop talking about the limitation. Turn back and draw from the archives of what God did yesterday. The only way to move forward is to look back and say, Father, thank you. When, when David stood before Goliath, he reached down to the archives of God's goodness and says, the God who delivered the bear and the lion to my hands, that same God. 
Many times we forget the things that God did yesterday and we stand before our desires and we keep yelling at heaven, are you not God? Don't bring shame to your name and so on and so forth. And then God is looking at us and wondering. But someone stands before God and says, Lord, I am grateful. I'm trusting God that my children will get admission. My first gratitude is that I have children. I never had to wait one day for a child. Lord, I thank you. And whilst you are thanking God, he says, don't talk about the admission issue again. It was covered already in your praise. That you acknowledge me. Your praise can spread wide enough to cover your requests. Are we blessed? First it was fragrance. Listen. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. That is how. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy of praise. So by that formula. Shall I be saved? I will call upon him. Not by saying God come and help me. I will call upon him by praising him for what he did yesterday. And I will use it as a secret arsenal to be saved from my enemies. To triumph from one level of grace to the other. Jesus multiplied loaf by giving thanks to the Father. Watch this. I wish I had time. Did you know that even when he went to the tomb of Lazarus, when you read John 11 from verse 35 down to 45, you will find out that after weeping, he went to the tomb and he said, Father, I give thanks. So that is how the grave opens. God is speaking to someone. You are trusting God for resurrection of things that died in your life. It has to first be alive before it multiplies. But there are times that it's already dead. Your first assignment is to bring it back to life before multiplication. The same secret that brings resurrection is the same secret that brings multiplication. Thanks. Thanks. Lord, I thank you. If you thank God as much as you pray and petition God over your request, you will not need to bring many, many requests again. Father, thank you. From morning till night, can you fast and pray and your prayer project is just thanksgiving. Lord, I want to thank you. You count your blessings. You name them one by one. And the writer says it will surprise you. If you are not surprised, you are not done counting. Keep counting. Keep counting. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, 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 my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Gratitude and thanksgiving. In Luke chapter 17, we'll not turn there for the sake of time, Luke chapter 17. From verse 19, the Bible talks about 10 lepers. Are we Bible students? The Bible talks about Jesus who was passing and he met 10 lepers. And they beckoned on him to have mercy upon them and he showed them mercy. He said, stand up, go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, suddenly they found out that the signs and the symptoms of leprosy had gone. But in the midst of that, the people went their way, showed themselves to the priest as the Lord demanded and left. But there was one person, pay attention, there was one person who returned back. It's amazing that Jesus was in a hurry passing. But then he returned back and when he did return back, listen carefully, when he returned back, he met, the one, he met Jesus standing there. Jesus was passing. And waiting for gratitude, he remained there. And when he came, he said, were there not ten of you? What suddenly happened to the nine? And he says, since you have returned, go your way, you are cleansed. 
To be cleansed means that from the blood you may be healed. But to be cleansed means that wholeness comes back to your hand. Multiplication. Multiplication at the instance of genuine heartfelt gratitude. Let me show you two scriptures and then we we'll pray. Psalm 50 verse 23. Psalm 50 and verse 23. Psalm 50 and verse 23. He said, Whoso offered praise glorified me and to him that orders his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of the Lord. Whoso offered praise as a way of acknowledging me as a way of saying thank you Lord for your faithfulness. As a way of saying thank you Lord for your goodness, your mercy, for all that you have done in my life. He says he brings glory to me and as a result he will keep seeing my salvation. He will continue to see my salvation. There is no limit to a grateful man. Physically, naturally, grateful people do not remain at the same level. Believe me. Grateful people always make advancement. It's difficult to say no to a grateful person. There are many of us who have received all kinds of helps and blessings from people, from men of God, from business colleagues, from destiny helpers. And many times we forget to acknowledge them until there is another need. Then we quickly send a five minutes text, just saying, God bless you. Five minutes later, sir, just to remind you again that the rent issue is here. If you have to wait for a pastor's appreciation day or pastor's appreciation service, to tell your pastor thank you. Let me tell you, thanksgiving is most powerful when there seems to be no occasion for it. When there is an occasion for it, it sounds very mechanical. It looks very mechanical that one day for no reason, you come before your pastor and say, sir, I just want to appreciate you. And usually you say, oh no, that's what is, is the, and insist. And say, pastor, please hear me. Just to say thank you. This is a token of my gratitude. To you and to your wife. I remember when I came to this church. I came confused. The only thing I had in my life. Was the wisdom to find this place. I knew nothing about the principles of life. But under your leadership. Under your mentorship. Look what God has done. I have come to say thank you. There are many members in this church. In this center. The good land. And across the entire centers. But I assure you. Your thanksgiving like like a photographer, it will add your face to the heart of your pastor. When he sees you, he will remember you. Thanksgiving. The key to multiplication. But profitable thanksgiving, like I've taught, comes when you surrender, when you find rest, and then you begin to thank him. Thank him. Glorify him. Acknowledge him. I'm not telling you what I don't do. These are mistakes already because you do not lay it to heart. You started by giving God glory. The company started increasing. You started by acknowledging the Lord and then you got to a point where now God gave you a global voice and you said, Lord, you are stealing my stage. Get out of the way. Allow me have the moment to enjoy myself and he says, your will respected. When he steps out, just when people begin to look at you, you start going down in their presence. And they say, so why did you call us? You called us to show and to learn a lesson from you that anything minus God is zero. Please hear me. The temptation to drive God out of our success is why many people do not last. Can you stand before the whole world and get down on your knees while they are watching you and say, Jesus, this is for you. Let the world see and know that you worked hard. We know that you did this. It is unto the Lord, the praise of his majesty. For except the Lord builds a house. He didn't say it will not be built. He said they labor in vain. To labor in vain means to do what should produce results, but it still does not produce results. 
I made up my mind as a principle that I would be ever thankful, ever grateful. Psalms 30 and verse 11. Psalms 30 and verse 11. Pay attention. Psalms 30 and verse 11. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. This is someone's prophecy. It says, and has put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Next verse. It says, to the end that my glory may sing praise unto thee and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto you. How long? How long? Global impact, how long? Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Ah. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Let it be a commitment from the depth of your heart. For as long as I am breathing, I will always. Sing it one more time. And I will not be silent. For your goodness, for your mercy, for your faithfulness. As long. The final key that supports thanksgiving is thoughtfulness. You never become a grateful person until you can think. The thoughtful are also the grateful. When you think of his deliverance, you think of the mercies of God. The songwriter says, when I think of the goodness of the Lord... And all that he has done for me, my very soul shall shout hallelujah. You must learn to be thoughtful. Shut your door and just sit down. Lord, this is what you have done. Thank you. You delivered me from a plane crash. Thank you. Yesterday, while we were celebrating Pastor Yemi and this that he had done, I sat back there and I saw the letter that he wrote and looking at his life and I began to think about my own life. I said, ah, but only a fool says there is no God. I still remember myself in one room. I still remember myself kneeling down before God in one room. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will return from a meeting drenched in rain. I will climb bike and return back and say, Lord, thank you for the honor and the privilege to even serve you. To be called your servant is an honor that nothing else can take. And I did not know that heaven, my gratitude was like a student at a defense, ready for a promotion. And God says, even in the rain, you can be grateful and you can be thankful. Let's go to the next level. May God always find you on your knees. May God always find you on your knees. That whatever it is that makes you too big to roll on the floor, sincerely before God, you pile all your CAC papers. I have 26 companies. Put them all on the ground and roll before them. And say, Lord, I'm doing this before you. And everybody looks at you and they feel, they feel embarrassed. And sometimes they may ask you like they ask David, why are you disgracing yourself? He said, I'm dancing before the God that took the kingdom from your father 
and gave me. Because if he can take it from your father and give it to me, he can take it from me and give to another person. Oh, that if you will not lay it to heart to praise me, I can raise up stones. I can raise up stones. May my life never become a vacuum. May my space never, let it never be written in the space of my destiny. Empty. That is bishopric. Let another take. Because you have not laid it to heart to thank him. This is a powerful word for many of us. This is why for one, two years now, your influence stagnated. Your results stagnated. It's not because you are backslidden. You suddenly forgot the euphoria of the applause of men brought you to a point where it's now embarrassing to go back to the same altar that lifted you drive any relationship out of your life that makes God secondary that begins to promote you above God tell them hold on thank you for this applause but let me tell you this I am what I am today because of the sure message of the God of David